At just 21 years old, he was one of the brightest burning stars of the AEF in France in 1918. Known for precision marksmanship and balloon busting, it would be his last unsanctioned mission that would make him a legend. Frank Luke grew up the child of immigrants in Phoenix, Arizona. He was well-liked and known as a rambunctious athlete in his youth. At the age of 20, Frank Luke enlisted as a private in the Signal Corps. He trained stateside to be a pilot and then transferred to France to finish learning the ins and outs of aerial combat. In July 1918, he was assigned to the 27th Aero Squadron commanded by H.E. Hartney. Luke quickly made a name for himself among the AEF pilots in France. He was famous for striking out alone and hunting down German planes across enemy lines, which blatantly ignored the regulations of the time. He quickly earned the reputation of a lone wolf. Luke also had a fondness for pursuing German observation balloons. Seemingly easy targets, they were in fact difficult and often deadly pursuits that involved dodging anti-aircraft fire and enemy planes. Though the gas inside the balloons was highly flammable, the outer shell was difficult to puncture. But Luke would not be deterred. Luke used tactics like incendiary ammunition, attacking near dusk when enemy fire was less accurate, and with the help of his best friend and wingman, First Lieutenant Joseph Vayner, Luke became famous for his balloon-busting skills. He was quickly racking up aerial victories against balloons and planes, with 13 confirmed in seven days. On September 18th, Vayner and Luke would run another mission together, taking out an observation balloon east of Verdun. Though enemy planes were on him, Luke was determined to take out the second observation balloon in sight. As Luke was bearing down on the balloon, Vayner fired on the squad of enemy planes pursuing him. The balloon exploded, but as Luke turned from the encounter, he saw Vayner's plane tumbling to the ground. In a fit of rage, Luke pursued the enemy planes, taking out three before returning home. Luke would never completely recover from the death of his best friend, and his mood grew increasingly dark and restless. Luke would take a short leave and return to fight again, but his fellow pilots and mechanics noted he was more mercurial than ever. Luke grew even more discontent and shirked regulations, continuing to set out alone and take risks that put his life in danger. One morning, after failing to return to his own field in favor of staying with the French the previous night, Luke's commanding officer had had enough. Luke was grounded and ordered to stay in his quarters. But on the morning of September 29, 1918, Frank Luke refused to stay put. Early in the day, he took off alone in his plane. In his first run, Luke took out a single German plane before needing to return for gas and supplies. No sooner had his mechanic readied the plane, Luke took off alone again. As he flew out, Luke dropped a piece of paper over the side of his plane to the men below. Watch for burning German balloons on the horizon. Then, Luke set his course for the German front. He took down one balloon, then another, and then another but taking down this many balloons without a wingman or a squadron at his back had left Luke vulnerable. And in his reckless pursuit of victory, he'd forgotten how exposed he was. Before he could return to the front, a formation of German planes was on him. Luke braced himself against the onslaught, skillfully maneuvering around returning fire. Luke managed to take down another German plane, but with numbers on their side, the Germans were quickly bearing down on him. Another round of shots from the German machine guns at his back, and Luke's plane had been critically damaged. Luke was quickly losing altitude and blood. With no hope of making it back across the front line, a wounded Luke prepared to land his plane just outside of a small French town behind enemy lines. Eyewitness accounts from the French villagers vary about what happened next. Some villagers claim that Luke continued to strafe the German lines as he landed, with German artillery, planes, and soldiers pursuing him from all sides taking out additional soldiers in his wake. Upon crash landing, Luke attempted to crawl his way to a small stream at the edge of the village, but the Germans were on him within minutes. Luke reportedly drew his pistol, firing at the oncoming men before collapsing moments later. Fulfilling an earlier promise he had reportedly made to his mechanics that he would never be taken alive. Frank Luke was 21 years old when he died. The French villagers covered Luke's body and buried him, leaving a marker for his gravesite. Rickenbacker, the American ace of aces, stated that if Luke had lived, he would have surpassed every World War I pilot. Reflecting on Luke, Rickenbacker stated, he was the most daring aviator and greatest fighter pilot of the entire war. His life is one of the brightest glories of our air service. 
He went on a rampage and shot down 14 enemy aircraft, including 10 balloons in eight days. No other ace, even the dreaded Richtofen, had ever come close to that. Luke's commander, Major H.E. Harton, a man both frustrated by and in awe of him, said, No one had the sheer, contemptuous courage that boy possessed. He was an excellent pilot and probably the best flying marksman on the Western Front. We had any number of expert pilots, and there was no shortage of good shots, but the perfect combination, like the perfect specimen of anything in the world, was scarce. Frank Luke was the perfect combination. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe so you can get more history in the future.